What's up, everybody? Destroy here. Welcome back to another cast of the Lord of the Rings of Battle for Middle 2, patch 1.09. And today we have a 1v1 on the Fords of Eisen 2. Let's see who we got here today. We got our first player, a broken Casper, is Men of the West. In the top left, in the bottom right, we have his opponents, Axelion as the dwarves. So we got dwarves versus the men. Alright. Casper's getting his. Is a uh, infrastructure going, of course, as is Excelion. And Excelion is throwing out a whole of warriors for his starting thing, so no battle wagon shenanigans or anything like that for his start. And then we get a barracks going down for Casper. So that is what he's going for as well. He'll probably go for. Uh, going for soldiers, I would expect. Oh. I think you go for tower? Well, you might go for tower guards to creep some uh, some works. Who knows? And same for uh, same for Thelion. But it looks like Thelion is going to go for guardians, so he'll be on the attack, not against the wargs, but against Casper. And Casper is going for Gondor soldiers. So creeping is going to be done quite yet. Looks like they're probably going to try and harass each other first, and then maybe movements and some creeping. It does look like the elven wood was used there, as you see here. I'm actually observing. Someone without it actually observing someone, oddly enough. Casper has used Elven Wood to uh, see what his opponent was. Because of course, in 1.09, you don't see what someone is when they go random. And also, that will uh, show you what he was building at the time of throwing that down as well. So, you have that temporary vision. And it does look like Casper has found this board mine. But. A little too late, as some guardians are already on the way to his base, and of course we'll have a rally call for Exelion, ready to go down on that when he's uh, ready to do so. At least I think he's going to wait until two of his battalions of guardians are together before doing so, which is probably the wise thing to do there. Because then he can get two for one. Now would definitely be the time. There it is. And then he's going to start ravaging the economy and infrastructure of Casper. Casper does have some archers on the field, though, so that will be his saving grace, I think, here. He's got another battalion on the way out, and some gunner soldiers just a little bit tanking there as well. It looks like Philly has given his dude's banner carriers. Did he research that? Or did they just get it automatically? <laughs> I don't actually know. Seems like it was already available, so. Unless they leveled up by themselves, of course. But anyway, he used it. And that, of course, gives 25% speed and 25% armor. So that's a nice little armor boost. But, sadly for him, he did not quite get the barracks. And now Casper is on full offensive mode with a much larger army than Exelion. So we'll see how that goes for him. Exelion does have one battalion of guardians in the mine. Looks like two. Two total, maybe. And he's throwing down a battle wagon. Or uh, forge works rather. Probably gonna go for a battle line, I would expect. Which will shut down these archers' swordsmen pretty heavily. So that'll be pretty good for him as well. But Casper needs to be very aggressive with his uh his harassment if he wants to shut the doors down. Which he can do with a lot of these soldiers of Gondor, but it doesn't look like a battle wagon is going to be on the way here shortly. And that will be problematic, to say the least. And he'll have to start getting tower guards if he wants to stay in the game. And there is some tower guards on the way. So, Casper is doing everything right so far. So, things are going alright, I'd say. So he got a mine kill as well. Didn't quite get this one, though. And I think he got that one as well, unless there wasn't one there before. But usually that one is one of the prime spots, the first places you put one. So I would assume he got that one as well. Single girl, single Gondorian running for his life. He could, of course, go back to the castle, the fortress, and get healed up if he bought a well or a house of healing or something. We have a builder there, probably for scouting purposes, keeping an eye for forward mine shafts. He doesn't have a huge vision radius, but he does have a vision radius, which helps. And now the tower goes on the field. Of course, Casper can start creeping the warglers effectively. He could do it with the archers as well. Obviously, tower guards, pikemen in general, are the best at creeping war glares. If you're not using archers, we have some phalanxes coming out for Exelion. He's getting his mines ready to go. Does he have a battle wagon? If he does, I don't know where it is. 
There it is. Nope, it's a builder. <laughs> Very battle wagon esque, eh? No? Probably not. I don't think there's any battle on that wagon. You know what I mean? Looks like he's gonna creep another war there, although he's gonna have some company here very shortly. Is that two battalions? No. Yes. There's two battalions on top of each other. So we got two battalions of guardians versus some phalanxes and ground archers. In theory, the men of the West should win this, but maybe not. Guardians are pretty strong, especially when buffed, and they do have this charge ability. Yeah, you can straight up just buy the banner and we'll run out of very for doors. That's kind of cool. And it just gives him that nice little charge attack. Looks like he will finally be able to kill these tower guards, which will leave these, of course, very vulnerable. <laughs> I hate that word. It's hard for me to say for some reason. Yep, we did manage to get some of them. Some tower guards managed to show up out of nowhere, which is good for Casper because that would have been devastating. These guys are going to be in trouble though if they go out. The battle wagon, if you can avoid the bikes, will have a field day here. Of course, it does have Axors on it as well, which will help for attacking buildings and such as well. Or anything, really. They're pretty good. If you can utilize the battle wagon really well, they are incredibly good. Looks like we do have a Boromir on the field for Casper. Ooh, nice. Nice micro from the Philly on there. Getting right through there. Threading the needle. Impressive. Well, those Guardians managed to get another farm kill. They're up to level 4 now. Although they're not going to be much for the might of Boromir, sadly. So they would need to get out of there. Sadly, though, they are dwarves and they're not going to be able to run very well. As you would expect. Unless they use their charge ability, I guess. 25% speed. Because otherwise they're not going to be able to outrun the archers. I think you have to target something for that though. He'd have to target backwards and then try to go forwards, which probably still get him killed. So probably no saving those. Does he have anything on the field yet? There's some stuff. He's got some phalanxes. He's got a couple of wounded builders. He's not looking super good for the Valiant. I'm going to be honest. Because if we have a look here, it's only up 130 of 600, and we have 316 of 600. I guess they're both the 600 mines, or farm command point limit, rather. It's not too bad, but of course the army size is quite severely different. So nevertheless, this is far bigger. And now 9 power points for Thelion extra, and we have 8 for Casper, so they're about even-ish. Thelion slightly ahead. Power points can make all the difference, of course. Thelion should be able to clean up these tower guards, no problem. But we do have a Casper invasion. Thelion needs to prepare his defenses. He has one battalion of guardians, one on the way, and that's really it. Not sure where the rest of his army is, <laughs> or if he has any. But he's going to need something, because Bormir is going to continue to level here. Or, well, he's going to try at least. And there we go, we have the Men of Dale summon. That is the 10 point power that Ixelion has chosen, and it's definitely a good choice. This is he's the only one with Cav as well, he doesn't have to worry about the uh, archers getting trampled, although the line of sight of the mineshaft has actually drawn the Men of Dale into battle. They're a little bit too close for comfort, and they're getting wrecked by Boromir. Battle wagon also fell victim to some pikes, which is unfortunate. More guardians being brought out of the mines here. Boromir's fighting for his life. Phalanx is being brought out as well, I think. I think Boromir should be just fine. Casper's assault should be okay. What was that? Is there a Gimli out? Oh shit, there is. <laughs> there he is. Didn't even see him. Gimli's out the field. That's another thing entirely. That explains where all of Xelion's money it went to. Gimli's not a cheap hero. And this investment in Gimli could be huge, as Gimli is very, very strong, of course. And he has a gain double armor leadership for all his dwarven allies around him. <laughs> and he's got hops as well, you know. 
Not the kind that you brew, you brew beer with, of course. I mean, he might. He's a dwarf. But he I bet he carries him on him. He's some sort of weirdo. Tom Bomb will deal summon on the field now. That is for the men of the west, of course. And there is a very nice Sonic song. Weakening the dwarves. Sending them flying. Those Boromir now. He's level 3. He can use the Horn of Gondor now if he wants. Gotta be careful once Gimli levels up, though. He's already level 3 as well. Once he gets to level 5, of course, Gimli becomes a monster. With the Slayer ability. So Boromir will have to watch out for that for sure. Tom Bombadil does have knockdown if he bumps into you, though. No matter who you are. Pretty much. Within reason, of course. You can't knock down a Mumik or whatever. He can knock down Gimli, even though he's expensive. Or just bumping into him. Something that's pretty good to utilize, actually. You can actually stop heroes from running away or what have you. Just using bomb bomb Tom Bombadil to knock them down. And then get your army on them. Pretty effective. And that looks like we have a Gloin on the field as well. Now, there he is. In all his bald glory. Now him and Gimli will lead the Dwarven defense against the men of the West. Oh, I thought there was a little, little dude in there just fighting. But no, that's a... Uh, just the guy we're trying to rebuild the mind jump. We do have Thillian Rangers on the field now. Although Gimli made short work of those for sure. <laughs> one remains, in fact. And Thillian making good use of the axe throw, which is great. And of course the slam from Gloin as well. He's got a lot of good AoE powers. Both of those are AoE powers, if you didn't know. Axe throw from Gimli is splash damage. Special, especially effective against cavalry and flyers. So there you go. I wasn't actually aware of that until I read that. But that, uh, that does make sense. It's a way to help dwarves counter cap a little better, of course, and uh, flyers, which as you might expect can be a bit of a problem for the dwarves. Flyers not as much because you have two different range units, but cab on the other hand, yes. Because your cab really can't stand up to their cab. Alright, we got Aragorn on the field now for a broken Casper. Once he starts leveling up, he'll be a nasty man as well. He is all, all his HD edition glory. Oh, so good. Every time I see that armor, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> so good. But he's gonna start wrecking house here. Very, very much so. Oh, we got a demolisher. A demolisher key. Interesting. Wait, does this connect to the mine shaft? Interesting. The hall expansion, whatever it's called, connects to the mine shaft. I wasn't aware of that. There's the Hobbit Summon, of course, from uh, Thelion. He can use all his little firework abilities that they come with, which are very strong, might I add. Those firecrackers and stuff are quite good. Hobbit Summon at 1.9 is a very strong ability. But of course, it's no match for the middle list. And they should bend that off without too much trouble. Looks like Ixthelion is bringing forth his heroes this way. Gloin is still level 1, sadly. He's a hero I always love to see at level 10, especially in 1.09. Because it's fun to see that glorious Shatterhammer. It's called Shake Foundation. It's his other move. Which is less fun. Ooh. There's a big slam there from Gloin. Everyone has Blade Master activated though, so now the other enemy heroes are going to have to watch out. Gideon doesn't quite have his Slayer yet. So he won't be able to stand up to Aragorn. Lots and lots is going on here. <laughs> Under the Elven Wood. It does look like the Men of the West are winning the battle though. There is far superior numbers. There's also a, of course. Ranger summon, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm losing. <laughs> Those are actual rangers. I guess why he just summoned an Athelian ranger, or Dunite rangers, but maybe not. And by maybe not, I mean definitely not. 
Yeah, that's interesting. Connects forges to Tunnel Network. It does something completely different than 2.2, which is kind of cool. So I'm not used to that. Makes sense, though. It's kind of like the Goblin version of the, uh, the Tunnel Network thing. Alright, we got much more dwarves being brought up. We have Men of Dale Summon being brought out as well. Let's go. Of men of this. Men of the West are more than ready to try and counter this. I think they should be able to. They have archer supports. No. Tons of it though. There are some civilians in there. And there's the Hobbit Summon for the Men of the West. Gimli has activated Slayer, but Gimli's getting wrecked, and down goes Gimli. Even Slayer cannot save. We lag Gimli. Unfortunate. There goes the Horn of Yonder from Bormir as well. And Casper should clean up here nicely. Luckily for Thelion though, he ran away his Gloin wisely. Not an engagement with staying in, because of course Gloin would have fallen into shadow. We got more dwarves being brought in from the southern forward here. And of course now Casper is going to have to react to this. His army is all the way in the top though. He could, of course, just ignore it and go straight for the base if he wanted to, maybe. I don't know the Demolisher. Did he die? Must have. Oh my god. Is it... Can it be? Walls in competitive play? Oh my sweet baby Jesus. Well, I think that's the first time I've actually seen a good player use a wall in 1.09. So there you go. <laughs> exactly as you should use them. Oh, that Sheik Foundation wrecked that archer range. She didn't quite finish it, though. Hopefully he doesn't sacrifice his going to get that, but would it be worth it? Maybe. So it looks like Excelion's plan is to wall off the middle forward here. So he doesn't have to worry about being attacked from that way, and he can attack from the north or south and defend much easier. And he has forward mines on the other side as well. So he can attack, but not be counterattacked as well. It's a solid plan, and I, honestly, I don't see why more players don't wall the center forward in. Some players consider it cheesy, maybe? I wouldn't say it's cheesy. It just forces your opponent to get a trebuchet, is all. If you can't react to the game, then, uh, well, it's a fortunate for you. Looks like we do have a mighty catapult put on the fortress, though, of Excelion. So Casper's gonna have to be a bit careful, or he'll get his army mighty catapulted. Also, he does have the armor upgrade, of course, which is a prerequisite to Mighty Catapult, so it's not surprising. But his walls will be fairly strong. Of course, he Vormir freezing those battle wagons with his Horn of Gondor, stunning them with his raging strap on. No, I'm not just saying that, that's what it says. <laughs> it's, it's a thing, it's a feature. Alright, Thelion's base is about to be attacked. Look at King Dane's out in the field as well. Very cool. He's not gonna use my cattle on that though. That's weak. Weak little army there. King Dane and his cohort here should be able to deal with that no problem. Especially with Axorvers and their insane range. The Axor range is so good. I actually like the fact that Axor has a huge range. Although it does beg the question, does that make Men of Dale irrelevant? I don't know. Probably not. Because Men of Dale do more damage. And they have fire arrows. But my god. I don't know the statistics of 1.09's everything, you know. Since I don't play it as much, and by as much I mean ever, I just kind of stick to casting it a little bit. Still. Who knows? Aragorn's getting wrecked by Gwyn. Gimli. And maybe Glenn's there as well. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> the Gimli and Slayer is a absolute monster against heroes. And that music can only mean one thing. Ganda! There he is. That's the fancy particle effect that comes with him. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Gandalf is a good choice, to be honest. It'll be good against the units, but against Gimli? That is another story entirely. He just lost all his heroes to Gimli, so... He might be, uh... In for a rude awakening in that case. I do hope he's not sending Gandalf down here. He is. No. Gandalf's going to be here by himself against a superior force. This is an unwise decision by Casper, I feel. 
Well, if you can get him out of there, it should be okay. What is what is he thinking? <laughs> Kendall's not known for his melee attack. It's gotta be said. We have a wall hub being thrown up here as well. Probably to save the builder though. But potentially could be used to actually wall off the area. Oh shit. <laughs> there it is. The walls are real. I knew it. It's like Santa. But not. Now we've got three battalions of Axlers there. So he's not gonna want to engage that. So we have Lots of units healing up at the fort here. He probably has siege kegs on his fortress, which is probably healing his troops, I would imagine. Yep, that little blue glow just proves the fact that there is healing going on. And we got a demolisher being brought up from this way. Is he going to try and sneak a demolisher through the wall? He might. Oh, he gets through just in time before the wall finishes. These soldiers are going to won't be able to stop that, but these tower guards probably will. I'm not quite actually sure how tanky these are in uh, 1.09, I guess we'll find out, won't we? I'm used to them being relatively unstoppable. <laughs> so, we'll see, uh, we'll see how much damage they take. It seems like it will be taken out fairly easily, though. This is the player armor. Oh, I didn't look. Well, I didn't really say it. Anyway. So, fair enough. Battle wagon. Well, oh, battle wagons can actually capture inns as well. That's a feature that should be in 2.02 as well. I don't know why it isn't. Because other cab can capture them. Why the hell get a battle wagon? But we have lots of exors out. We're blowing the munch up and King Dane and Gimli with a bunch of dwarves ready to do battle. But moving into Casper's base. Casper is moving into engage as well. Does he have his heroes back? He does a Boromir back. I don't see Eragorn though. So, that's the thing. Gimli does have Slayer back, so he's probably gonna insta kill Boromir and Gandalf, I imagine, here. Oh, there's Eragorn. Better the light to the party than never. Ooh, and there's the Undermine. Huge. And now Gloin can arrive with his army if he so desires. At least be careful not to get AoE'd by this trebuchet. And he does so. Oh, no, exactly what it, Look at that. Look at the amount of Axlers that just died in one clump. I think Aragorn did that. Oh my god. That's something you have to be very, very careful of as dwarves. It's genuinely very dangerous to pop out our army out of my shaft. Because <laughs> you could lose the whole thing in one fell swoop. Gandalf's not dead, surprisingly. Gimli has used his Slayer ability. And Aragorn's still alive, and Gandalf's still alive, so I mean, that's not too bad for them. And of course, there's an army here. Oh no, King Dane's actually fallen to Boromir there. And Aragorn's whittling down Gimli. Aragorn does have Elendil ready to be used. Oh, Gandalf tried to run away, but the axe throw caught him. Unfortunate. I had a feeling X throw, not X throw, but just Gimli in general would be the death of Gandalf. Gimli might get killed here though if he's not careful. So he's gonna pull a tactical retreat. And Casper is now walling off this southern fort here. Interesting. We have a war of walls, everybody. It's a thing of beauty. This is what I've been waiting for all my life. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But it's glorious, nonetheless. I do like seeing use walls used in play. Obviously, you don't want like wall spam. Like, spamming layer upon layer of walls is cheesy and not very fun. But having one layer of wall never hurt anybody, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't slow the game down. Yeah. Do I care? Not really. I'm alright with it. Because it's for a good cost. It's for the children. Gloin is up to level 7. We may very well see a level 10 Gloin in this game, if we're lucky. So we do have trebuchets being brought up to try and bring down the wall hub, but it's self-repaired itself pretty quick, it looks like. He's going to need the upgrade on the, uh, the old siege weapons if he's going to start doing real damage to those trebuchets. Otherwise they're not particularly good. Looks like Gloin did not get away from Aragorn or his army, so that's unfortunate for him. Now it looks like Athelion's going to need a way through here. 
Which Glowing would have been perfect for. Has a Shake Foundation. Well, Shake Foundation opens gates. Uh, it probably does pretty good damage to a wall section as well, actually. If you have a gate, though, and you use Shake Foundation on it, it will actually straight up open the gate for you. Maybe even destroy it, I can't remember. But it, either way, it opens a gate. So, it looks like a gate is being thrown up for Casper, so he's going to be inviting himself to battle very shortly. Is he preparing to let the dwarves in? What is this? <laughs> looks like he is. He wants to do battle with the dwarves. It looks like the dwarves have upgrades now as well. They're shiny golden armor and blue forged blades. This is interesting. Usually you don't see an enemy letting the enemy through. Oh, but he tricked him. He cut off half of his army in, half his army out. Nice. Nice tricksy play there, Casper. Very well done. Although a demolisher is at his doorstep, and that should start giving some damage there shortly. Get off using lightning sword on the wrong target, I would say, for sure. There's a Gimli in there. <laughs> Not being hit by it. Oh no. Aragorn has fallen. He's really convinced that Gandalf can 1v1 Gimli. I'm not so convinced myself. And Gandalf luckily does have a horse though. And he can get away. There goes the gates. The demolisher has broken through. So now things are about to get real. And of course the demolisher, if it has enough defense, can keep going. For the forts. Hexlers are trying to survive here. Look at them. Look at them a lot of HD glory. They are dying rather rapidly to Boromir, who is uh, just in the field there. Got more dwarves being brought up from Ecthelion. Looks like he has King Dane just chilling over here for some reason. Oh, the middle has been destroyed by some trebuchet fire, it looks like. Has he used his mighty cab? Well, yeah, he has not. Let's have a look at the old command points and stuff. Ecthelion has himself. Let me just, before I say that, doubles the armor, basically. Okay. Double armor is what you get for a uh, deploy. You have Undermine, and a Dale, Hobbits, or I call it, Rebuild, Heal, 20 power points, 170, 1,000 command points. And then for Casper, we have Duna and Allies, 11 power points, Hobbits. Tom, Bombadil, Elven Wood, Heal, 11 power points, 351, 975. So it like we'll have a 25 point power for Thelion very shortly, and not so much for Casper. He's got a ways to go. Jesus. Even the heroes can't really do much about this. Double armor seems to be a, maybe a bit much. Maybe every iteration of the Demolisher is OP. Maybe that's just in its blood. But holy crap. That's going to take a while to kill. You have catapults being brought up for Exelion now as well. We never catapult off. If that's a thing. It is now. Well, Gandalf the White being no, oh, he's not the white yet. I think one more level he needs to be Gandalf the Whites. He's got a white hat though. So uh, that's not <laughs> Alright. Because of course he's the white team color. Uh, we've got here tower guards. We have an undermine being thrown in the back of the base of Casper Thelion go for a sneak attack, the undermine tactic. And he's brought forth the King Dane and some dwarves. Men of Dale being summoned in as well. Hobbits with the arrow volley hitting all of the Men of Dale, killing every one of them pretty much. If not every one of them. I don't think the sneak attack's gonna work very well to be honest. Got countered too quickly. Now they're being slaughtered. Blaine has huge shake foundation in the fortress at least. But, uh, do too much. Oh, I thought he had I thought he had Shatterhammer. He's still level seven. <laughs> I was like, is he gonna? No. no. But between the hobbits and the defending men of the west, I think they should be able to <clears throat> fend off this attack. Although he does have a secret battering ram on the way there, and there is also a citadel being summoned in right in front of his fort, which of course does come with the mighty kettle on top. It is a uh, tunnel as well. 
So just like the Undermine, it can bring stuff out, and you can also equip catapults to it. And give it to Orbis, don't worry. We're going to demolish it in the mighty... Oh yeah, Citadel. It looks like Casper's not going to be able to take all this out. He's basically got to take out a Dwarven Fortress. There is the Mighty Catapults. Will be enough to finish the fort. Oh, not quite. What about Gimli? Is Gimli going to sacrifice his life to take this fortress? I think so. And I don't think he's actually going to sacrifice anything. Because he's just fine. Down goes the fortress of Casper. And this is now being upgraded with Dorn Stormwork. If he had trouble getting rid of it before, now he's going to have more. So yeah, Casper's pretty much screwed here. Also, he's blocked in, of course, by the gate. <laughs> so that's not ideal for him. He could flee to the south or the middle, but of course that just leads straight to the enemy base, which isn't going to help him much. Casper does still have a builder. Does he have the money for a fort? I doubt it. No, he does not. He almost had a 25-point power as well. It's highly unfortunate for him. Too bad Gandalf can level 10. Very rarely do you ever see a Gandalf level 10. It's too bad. But, I mean, it's, it should be not super easy to obtain, of course. But it's always lovely when it is. But yeah, this Citadel's gonna be a bit of a problem now, I'd say. <laughs> so there's basically a fort in the back of where the fort was. And this Demolisher's still alive. Jeez, Louise. Finally it goes. MVP of the game. Tanking so much damage. Let's see how much actually this does without upgrades. I mean, Casper really should have upgraded Shrevy to the like, All this Dwarven Stoneworks pretty hard to kill. It's alright in amount of damage. I guess he can keep getting more of these, but I think upgrading the Firestones would probably be more effective. Perhaps. But it's left alone. It'll it'll do its thing, yeah. We got more dwarves, more demolishers on the way. Does Excellion have rebuild? Of course he does. He's a dwarf. So of course he can just rebuild this uh, and it starts getting low. Just be careful not to get all his army hit by that. It does seem like this actually works pretty well for the exiting though. Seems like everything pops out pretty nicely in the front of it. Unlike mine traps, which can be a bit finicky. Othelion is going to try and push deeper into the middle of the space here. But it's still level 7. There he goes, level 8. Level 8 and a half. <laughs> he holds a quick. And Gandalf the White has ridden to save them all. I suppose a blast there. Nice, nice. Between Gandalf and Boromir, though, will they be able to defend against the Dwarven heroes? And of course, everything else the Dwarves have. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Looks like Gandalf's about to die to uh, Gloin. Casper should have ran away. Oh, he's so lucky that Boromir has knocked down. <laughs> Boromir managed to knock down Gloin before he uh, got killed there. He needs to get Gandalf out. Boromir's not going to be so lucky, I think. Oh, he actually is lucky. He's lucky Gimli isn't here. Because one Knight's Axe Throw would have killed either of these guys. A new fortress is being erected for the Men of the West. So he could come back into this game, but it's looking highly unlikely, I'd say. He's a throwing on his quite a strong position of power in this game, having this here. It's also rebuilding now, so any damage that was done to it, it's actually rebuilding very quickly as well. That's unfortunate. Casper is pretty much doomed to uh, be surrounded by fortresses at this point, I think. Fortresses and citadels. And walls. <laughs> it's glorious. It's all you ever wanted as a dwarf, really. Also, Lone Tower as well, which has got neat abilities. I think it's actually got the uh, the armor upgrade because this has an armor upgrade. I'm not mistaken. Unless this uh, this counts for that. I don't know. It says research required at the fortress. Oh no, it's just at the fortress. So if he has all those things to at the port, then all these will be effective. I'm just watching him like a hawk, waiting for level 10. You better use Shatter Hammer. Just to make it interesting. Mormon's gonna die. 
And then he could just shatter hammer for fun. Do it! Please! I hope he shatter hammers. Yeah! <laughs> he even ended the game with it. Glorious. Awesome. Well, there you go. That was a pretty good game. I enjoyed that very much. Nice to see some wall action. That's how you do it. Both players use walls effectively, but I feel the dwarves' walls were a little bit more effective, obviously. And of course, they got a nice undermine, got a nice citadel in there, and just managed to overpower the men. But yeah, well played to both those players. It was a pretty good match. I hope you guys enjoyed that as well, and I'll see you guys in the next cast of Lord of the Rings The Battle for Miller 2, Patch 1.09. See you all next time.